Hey guys, this is Justin for Generic Gaming, and welcome back to another episode of my Minecraft Advanced Techniques Guide. In this episode, I'll be covering some redstone techniques that use pistons, like these, that uh, I haven't seen on my quick YouTube searches. I had a lot of these ideas to do before, but I searched YouTube for a little while, and I found out that pretty much every single idea that I had has already been done by somebody else, and usually in a better manner. They already had tutorials, everything, everybody knew about them, because I'm kind of late to the game with this. But anyway... These are some that I think are unique, or at least I haven't seen on YouTube yet. I probably haven't searched hard enough, but whatever. Starting off here, we have a water bridge. The way this works is this platform here, when you step on it, creates a bridge over the water, and then this platform resets it. Easy enough, pistons are below the water, and you can still get boats by, or whatever you want to do with the water, or just make it still look clean. When you press this plate, it opens up. There's also a plate over here to reset the bridge if you need to come back the other way. So, the way this works is, you have one of these little latches here. I'll put up the diagrams on screen with their, na their official names and everything. This is basically a memory cell. And what this does is when I press a button, like this, this will reset the memory cell, and this one turns it on. So when I press this button, all of these platforms go up, and they will stay up. Even though the button was only temporarily pressed, everything stays up. When I hit this button on the other side, everything goes back down. This is the reset switch. That's the button. That's the reset switch. Easy enough. All right, now I'm going to show you what this actually looks like from below. So down here, that plate that you step on connects to this redstone here, which goes across and hits this part of the latch. This will turn it on and push all of these up. This side over here is the reset side. It's just wired both to this switch up here, and if you go around, it's wired all the way across with this repeater because redstone only travels for a certain amount of blocks before you need a repeater to keep it going. It travels over here, and this is the reset switch. So basically, it's just wired directly through the back into the reset switch. Everything's controlled right here. Now that might be simple, but a lot of problems I had when building this was causing all these pistons to go up at the same time. You actually need to alternate torches from either, either side, and I'll show you why. If you don't, this is what it looks like. And notice that none of this redstone is running into these blocks here, which the pistons are connected to through these redstone torches. And an animal just stepped on one of the switches. That's a kind of one of the design flaws here is animals can activate it because it's switch-based. If you use buttons, then animals can't activate it. That's a good way to fix that. But here, if you had everything on one side, none of the power is getting transferred. So you have to alternate, so that way you can send the power directly into the blocks. By sending the power directly into the blocks like that, from both sides, same thing happens over here, you can make this go on forever. And I will show that above ground. This is hit right here above ground. You can go on essentially forever with this bridge. As you can see when I turn this on, all the power just has to go straight into these blocks. If I set it up like this, notice how it no longer works. Those two go down, but when I do that, they go back up. Down, up. So it has to alternate. And just by using repeaters, just put it down a repeater, make sure it's on one delay, and then keep the redstone going like that you can go on forever. Next up is something everybody has that's obvious and a solution to make it less obvious. Everybody who has used pistons with redstone, I'm sure has built something similar to this, which is opening and closing a trap door of some sort or a door in a wall or something similar. The problem with these designs is it's really obvious. I mean, there's a switch right here. Clearly, that switch controls this. What if you want to be more subtle about it? Well, if you want to be more subtle about it, Let's go down and change that. So here we are at the bottom of my mine. It's a big open area. Seems to all be cleared out. But there's this little hole in the wall. It looks like I just stopped mining because there's nothing back here. In reality, there's a whole passage back here. It's just hidden. Now normally, people would have some kind of switch here, like there, to control the pistons. But that's stupid. It's so obvious. What you can do instead to be less obvious is you carry around redstone torches with you. I always have some. And then what you do is this is a door. You just don't see it. 
you put a redstone torch right there, and the door opens. When you take the torch away, the door closes. Secret door, no one would ever know it's even there. Unless, of course, they mine through it, but everything in this game, you can just mine eventually, you'll find it. So how this works is this, pit, this uh, redstone torch right here is connected to these pistons by this. Redstone torch is connected right below here, goes up a block, powers this. This is just an inverter, comes back down, and then it's sent into each of these pistons. Each of these pistons is a sticky piston that will push forward and bring back these stone blocks. So that way it looks just like you have, well, a door. And if you want to close it, you just put another redstone torch anywhere, really. As long as it's touching the wire, it will work. And close your door so nobody knows you're back here. One little design flaw I know about, don't point it out to me, that torch stays there. But you know what, people really aren't that observant. They're not going to notice it. I wouldn't worry about it. Now here we have something that I'm sure somebody else has posted somewhere before. I've just never seen it. This is a tunnel. This simulates what it is like underground. I just did this because I didn't really want to dig all this out. Notice it's super dark. You can't see where you're going. It's just annoying. But you want to be able to see. But you don't really want to leave torches because you don't want everybody seeing what's going on. Or whatever ungodly reason you have to keep it dark. Ambiance, if you will. This right here is a light switch. Currently the lights are off. The switch is down. Switch the switch up. Lights turn on. You can see. This is a piston-based light switch. It is very useful. I have one underground that uses redstone torches, but redstone torches don't really provide that much light, so this is a much better solution if you want variable lighting. The way this works is if we come out here, and this is the reason I built it above ground so you can see very easily how this is all built. Here's the switch. It's the same, it does the same thing as the switch back here, which is connected to this wall right here. When you turn it on, all of these repeaters get turned on, which turns off this redstone torch, which lets these torches go back on. Each one of these is connected to a piston, and each of these pistons is either opening or closing this grass bit. Watch if I turn this off. These pieces of grass are pulled back, allowing this torch light to shine through. If we, can, if we cut this down, you can see that each of these just has the torches right above it and the holes in the ground. It's a simple enough design. What was complicated about building this, really, why did I put that there? What's complicated about building this is that you have to find a solution to use uh, the redstone properly, and that took a long time for me to have something that was easily repeatable like this that would properly transfer the redstone current to where it needs to be. So the way you build these is pretty simple as you can see just looking at it. It's redstone coming in to a redstone repeater. That repeater pushes into a block. The reason you need this repeater before the block is, well I can demonstrate right here, if you have this block and you have torch, redstone, this redstone on the other side is not powered. So let's do that. Notice how the redstone on the other side is not powered. That still turns off like it should, but this redstone on the other side is not powered. If you replace that redstone with a redstone repeater, then not only does this turn off, but the redstone signal actually travels through the block and keeps going. This makes it possible to make a more compact design that doesn't have to come out to build all of this. So that way it can be one layer instead of like three out. It's just so it's more convenient when you're building underground. Alright, so last technique I have, which honestly I can't find a real use for this, but I built it, might as well show it. This is a timed water dispenser. What you have is a water source block up here, just get it from any pond, use a bucket, put it up there, you're good. Make sure you have a piston that is constantly activated, that's what this redstone torch here does, is it will activate this piston up here. Now, don't ask me how this is transferring power, I honestly have no idea how this is working right now. I assume it's transferring power to this block and then out from it, but really, no clue. I'm not amazing with redstone, I'll admit. But anyway, I can make it work. That's all that's important. So, pressing this button makes the water drop for just a second or two. And that's 
a little variable current. You could replace this button with anything you want. Could be a redstone torch to make it constant if you really wanted to, like if I take this off. You make a constant flow. And then you can only turn it off every now and then by pressing the button. So you can invert that any way you want. But it's just a quick little water dispenser. Don't know what you'd do with it, but I built it thought I'd show it. So yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching my Minecraft Advanced Techniques Guide, Piston Edition. If you have any ideas of what I could build or any questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. I will try and respond to as many of them as I can. But of course, I really can't get to them all because we just have so many subscribers. That's a joke. We really don't. Thanks for watching. Go ahead and if you want to be one of our subscribers, do it. Just don't do it to, for these videos too often because I'm going to be honest here. I don't make these videos way too much. Minecraft has not held my interest recently. This took me months to get this one video out. So if you're just going to subscribe for Minecraft, don't, don't even waste your time. going to be completely honest. But if you like me, sub. Because that's what it should really all be about. Okay? Thanks. Hey guys, this is Justin for Generic Gaming, and welcome back to- Oh man, is it getting dark? Fuck this. <laughs> Come on. Alright, let's try that again.